welcome to the backyard garden of Jim Pines in the Westchester Borough. How you doing? Welcome. <laughs> um, Jim, why don't you tell us a little bit about your gardening experience and how long you've been doing this? Yeah, I've been in this since we moved here about 10 years ago. Was a gardener as a kid, but then started back up once we moved in. And just a bunch of tech, different techniques. Interplanting, doing a trellising to give myself some more space. Uh, a little bit of square foot gardening method. Um, a lot of the seeds, a lot of plants are all started in small containers and then I transplant out and I'll brag a little. Everything this year because I started myself, didn't buy anything anywhere. Wow. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, welcome. Come on, let's take a walk around. So, uh, did you put this fence in yourself? Yes, just built this this past summer for okay. this year to start. This is going to be our new greens garden. The wrought iron fence, just a nice decoration, but also to help keep the rabbits out. I'll show you another bed that has it that's completed to keep the rabbits out on how this will go. But nice raise the stone to hold and a new soil will get planted. This will get planted out in the fall. All new good greens to really just go going in the fall. Uh, like I said, new bed, easy right outside the door. So you find that it, this will still keep the rabbits out even though it is raised off the ground? No, no, no. We'll have to put in some screening. Oh, uh, gotcha, okay. Small, light plastic fencing gotcha. that'll keep them out. Uh, but this more for show. Do you yeah. ever have any deer around here? Haven't had deer yet. Okay, yeah. With Probably gray, that busy road there. With Greystone going, I think we're going to see deer this fall. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, so tucked over in the corner there is a big trellis, and that is a winter squash. In the corner is a winter squash. Uh, that should, by six, eight weeks from now, just completely start to fill that and just allow them to hang off and do easy picking. Uh, peony flower, Queen Anne's lace, that'll be coming out this year. Just, it was there when I started putting it in. And a few herbs for now, but we'll get this planted out nice. I see your purple basil. Yes, that's <laughs> the purple basil. Purple Italian and Thai basil. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, on the topic of pest control, is that what this is here for? This is more of a uh, shade cloth, 30% shade cloth to block the sun. Uh, these are more spring, fall vegetables turnips, radishes, and a few beets in here. Without this, and today's heat gone to 90, these guys will just droop and wilt like crazy. Right. But under here, 30% of the sun's block. It also helped to keep out, if I were to seal it up completely, the white moths, the cabbage moths to keep off of them. And it would keep some pests out. But I use this one more for shade cloth. Just this is to a keep. great tool. Oh, I, this my is, collard greens have been just wilting every yeah. afternoon, and I don't know how to help them. This is, uh, and if you go with an umbrella, you block all the sun. That's too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This stuff, this is worth the money. This has got to be eight years old. Wow, eight years. Yeah, now it's just me, so I take care of the stuff. And you know, I don't see any snags or anything. I just handle it real careful. But yeah, this has, comes in great. I also have a 60% for in the middle of the summer to block the tomatoes. You don't want them getting over the so the percentage of sunblock is how like how tightly woven? Yeah, oh, how tightly wow. Woven is. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. All the same material, but just, yeah. Interesting. Back here, garlic. Uh, just getting ready to harvest. I mean, they're really ready to harvest. These guys here, soft neck. You can see they're starting to lose their color. They're ready to come out. And the hard neck will escape. So we'll pull those in the next couple days. They'll be real tasty. So I'll tie them up real yeah. quick. So it looks like you have a lot of different greens right in this area here. Yeah, in this bed I interplanted a lot of stuff. This was a uh, early lettuce, from spring, leaf lettuce, and head lettuce. Oh wow, yeah. Yeah, Swiss char. Then we got carrots. They'll be another 60 days till they're ready. Then the kale. We'll start harvesting that soon. Uh, that's just tasty, beautiful stuff. Superfood. And then interplanted while the lettuce is finishing, I put in pole beans. Oh, I see that. Yeah, that's what the strings for. It. They're gonna run right up, and this 60 days, this will be completely covered. You won't see much underneath of it. But they'll just run up the poles, up the strings, connect to the top, and it takes probably till late July, early August, till they start to make any kind of beans. Okay. And um, what, so tell me a little bit about this. Is this oh. a weed or is this a green? No, this guy, this is Mizuna, a good like a stir frying green. Mm -hmm. uh, we eat it just in a salad, but once it gets a little older, it starts to bolt and set flower, set seed. Uh, I figured let's let it go to flower, and we'll keep the seeds this year. Can I have a little taste of it? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Could be different now that it went to flower. It's bitter, but it would still 
It would be good in a stir fry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. the consistency of it. Yeah. Cool. And then for harvesting, I don't just come through and cut off the whole head. We break off the outer leaves, just go around and break them off. Right. And just leaves the heart and the plant just can regenerate. So we harvest once a week. And out of this area, I was getting about a pound of lettuce a week. Oh, for wow. For the past month. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it went really well. The Swiss char, we haven't started harvesting yet. It's just getting big enough. The carrots are coming in. And right. the kale, like I said, we'll get started on that. In the next couple weeks, start harvesting that again, breaking off on the side. And just the flower area I put in, just to add, to bring the pollinators in, add some color, allow some cutting, cone flower, echinacea, daffodils, some other things that come up later. I think those guys that you just held up, I'll get those in here. But just a good flower area to come in and draw in the pollinators. These are aroma tomatoes. Uh, we'll use these for sauce. Should get a good 100, 150 pounds out of these eight. At the cages, keep them nice and strong. I plant them somewhat close, but these are determinants. They'll get just above the cage and everything stops, then they'll just produce tomatoes and we'll pick for a month. Be ready. They come in real good. So uh, I personally believe that vertical gardening is the future and uh, peas are always a great example of that. Yeah, now this, they were standing up straight to last night's wind, but not any damage to them, just push back some. But if you look, they just started setting, making peas. Uh, put these in mid-April, didn't rush. They just slowly came up and in the last five days they started setting, creating flowers and the peas have started. So for the next three weeks we should get peas as long as the June temps don't run too hot. And look how little space it needed Yeah, it took just, because of vertical gardening. This is an old baker's rack the wife had. And right in again, some more pole beans, same technique as before, put them in. They're gonna run up these strings underneath their uh, beets and the Roma tomatoes I've got up front here. Well, I didn't see you there. Uh, I'm standing in the middle of a giant potato forest. Got three varieties in five containers, 25 gallon containers started early April and they had a few frosts through April but you can't tell that now. Yeah, this is the luck of the Irish. <laughs> yeah, these are the Irish potatoes and I don't know if you can see yet but up front are sweet potatoes and they just got planted last week. They really want the heat. Now I heard you can do sweet potatoes vertically. Is that true? You're gonna have to then manually trellis them up. They won't climb. There's no tendrils. But yeah, this area will completely get covered in leaves this year. Wow. I'll battle the rabbits yeah, on them say, nibbling on what's on the ground. Definitely. But the tubers will be fine and it look good. So one of my favorite things about Jim's gardening methods is that um, he uses so many different kinds of techniques. Um, this looks like onions and peppers, and I know that they're companion plants, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I more plugged these in because I had space, and the way I'm going to grow these peps, I started one down here. Each plant I'm going to give two strings and only leave two main stems coming up, and just to encourage the plant to put its energy into only two stems and make as much produce on those two stems as it can. Wow. Um, I haven't pruned these back yet, I'm waiting for them to really get good set in here but I want to get the strings in so you can see though later next week I'll start pruning them back and clipping them to the strings so you'd have to wait for them to get at least uh, like six to t ten inches high to really know where those two main stems are yes okay yes I had when I planted them I just took off I put a string in here they were about four inches lower and I wanted them to all get up to a line before I started so yeah these have grown just since they've been in here's a good example of what we'll do those two branches there they mm -hmm. split off will keep only two and the rest of these guys will get cut off. It's like suckering. Yeah, like suckering. Never seen that before. Just for peppers. And now that'll grow up like that and we'll just watch these these stems come up. Very cool. Uh, so what kind of tomatoes are these? Are they also Romas? No, these are full binding tomatoes, indeterminates, purple Cherokee. This is a cherry tomato. This okay. guy should run a sun gold, the little golden ones everyone oh, yeah. loves, yeah. Uh, one called a carbone. As they grow, we'll keep putting clips on them and support the plant to only one vine. We'll come in, we'll break the suckers off like that, and we'll just let the one vine go all the way up. And once it gets to the top, we can unravel the string and just keep dropping it down. So that as the plant grows, we'll break off the bad leaves and the trout, the 
where all the tomatoes are finished and just let it keep running all summer and we can just keep dropping it down. It seems like a very gentle way of guiding them as opposed to tying. Like, yeah, wrapping them around. Yeah, and really choking them. So. Yeah, I, it works fine and I, over years I've saved some of the clips. I mean, it depends on how fastidious you want to be. Yeah. But I get back in and take the clips off that haven't broken yeah, and reuse broken. them. This area I'm saving for green beans. Even beans, I start in the six inch containers and we just transplant everything out. Likewise. Yeah, it just makes it easier when you get a good root base started and that's ready to go in the ground and ex and just take off. Yeah, it won't take long. No, it won't, just like these guys. That's, you see them starting to go and you'll see these aren't weeds, it's clover interplanted everywhere as nice. a nitrogen fixer. And then finally another trellis, <clears throat> two different varieties of cantaloupe. These are real cantaloupe from the cantaloupe region over in France. Oh, wow. Yeah, and they have a totally different smell and taste of the muskmelons we buy in the grocery store. And these guys, again, they'll run, fill this completely. I actually have some little slings that I'll tie on because oh, I'll yeah. make about a two pound melon. I've seen the underwear slings on the, yeah. online. I think that's <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, I love that. Yep. And last year we got some great, great melons. I was really, really happy with them. How is the um, flavor different? Uh, much sweeter, has more of what, what you're smelling, you're more tasting of a cantaloupe. Mm. Um, it, I understand why they don't aren't commercially done because they just won't hold fresh for a I long see, time. Okay. Yeah, there's no way to make them on a farm and then get them to the market in time before they oh, rot. So fresh. it is a special to grow at home, yeah. Well, uh, thanks for having the Westchester Green Team out to your yard, which is, if you add an animal and it's easily a small farm, um, highly impressed, yeah. Thanks. You, you really inspire the Westchester Green Team, so thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. <laughs>